The Texas Longhorns and Florida Gators set to do battle at DKR in Austin, Texas. We are here previewing, predicting, and breaking down this game between the Longhorns and the Gators. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Phillips. He's Cole Thompson. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications. Check us out via podcast wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. This segment brought to you by our friends over at MyBookie. Head over to MyBookie.ag. Use promo code SECU at sign up to receive a special welcome offer on your first deposit. That's MyBookie.ag. Promo code SECU to get your special welcome offer today. For the first time since 1940, Texas and Florida are set to meet on the gridiron this weekend in Austin. We are here previewing, predicting, and breaking down this game between the Longhorns and the Gators. I am Chris Phillips. Helping me do so, my good friend Cole Thompson joins me once again. Cole, what's going on, my friend? Appreciate you taking the time and excited to break down this matchup with you. Crack open a brand new bottle of Tito's and start drinking at 5 a.m. because this game is going to get drunk really, really fast. No idea what to expect from Texas coming off of a bye. No idea what to expect from Florida because, well, well, it's Florida. Let's just call a spade a spade. After last week, everything and everything for the world's largest outdoor cocktail party is now being under the microscope. Billy Napier's got to secure one marquee win left on the schedule if he wants to be back in 2025. Does it happen down on the 40 acres? And can he do it with potentially his best asset sidelined for another week? And to your point, Cole, a lot of different storylines in this one from the Florida perspective. You just hammered it. I think, Billy, we all would agree, even though there's some of us like myself who think that what should be done tomorrow should just go ahead and be done today when it comes to Billy Napier. But – but if he is going to return in 2020, 2025, securing one of these big upsets, signature wins, going to go a long way in doing so. And again, like you mentioned for Texas, coming off the bye, we saw them a few weeks ago in person in Nashville against Vanderbilt, secure and squeak out a win. So we'll see if they can build them. I mean, a huge month upcoming for Texas football when you think about the SEC title race, the college football playoff, everything in between. Again, this game taking place, 11 a.m. local time kickoff there in Austin, Texas at DKR being televised on ABC. Texas Cole is a 21-and-a-half point favorite. The over-under is set at 48 total points. Texas leads the all-time series 2-0-1. And And again, like I mentioned, they haven't met since 1940. Who can forget that classic? Texas won that ballgame 26-0 over the Florida Gators. Cole, as we dive into this game We've got to start on the injury front. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing when it comes to this ballgame. I was asked a few days ago, Cole, you know, do you think Florida could go in there and, and pull the shocker, right? There were some moments, obviously, a lot of moments against Georgia. They went toe-to-toe with a Georgia Bulldogs team that, let's not forget, a few weeks ago went into Austin and took care of their business against Texas. But if you don't have DJ Lagway, or if he's seriously limited, I seriously doubt your chances – at having any opportunity to pull any type of upset. Billy Napier coming out early this week, Cole, saying they're not ruling him out as of yet. I think things came back. The injury, it wasn't quite as severe as you once thought, which is good, by the way, Cole, because as someone there in person, I didn't get to see the TV telecast. I mean, seeing a guy taken off the field on the cart, uh, not a good sign, especially when it's your starting quarterback, and it was a non-contact injury. Sounds like it was just a hamstring sprain, though. Not as severe as they thought. Maybe he goes, maybe he doesn't. But, Cole, I think the big question is this. Even if DJ Lagway can go, I mean, he's probably not going to be 100%, right? So that probably puts things on Aiden Warner if he's forced into action. How much of a chance do you give Florida, really? So if there's any path to victory, because we try to see both sides, if there's any path to victory, Cole, it's got to come with DJ Lagway under center, the dynamic nature he brings to his game. I liked a lot of things I saw from him against Georgia. You feel like he's getting better and better with each start, but it feels like a really tough ask for a guy that's coming off this injury. And even if he goes, is he 100% is the big question. Well, there's three things that we have to take away. Number one, it's a rivalry matchup. Sometimes you just throw the stat sheets out the window and say, play football for three hours and someone's coming out on top. That's how it felt during the first two quarters down in Jacksonville at Everbank Stadium between Florida and Georgia. Number two, you have to realize that some people will say that if DJ Lagway plays in this game, Georgia finds a way to lose because of DJ was cooking. Um, not cooking. He was not making too many mistakes, but he only had two passes for 66 yards and one was a 43-yard score to Aiden Mysel. So 
not cooking, but still putting himself in a great position in a rivalry matchup. But number three, it's more than just DJ Lagway being out. They have been limited with the running back room because no Montreal Johnson for two weeks. They have been limited at times a wide receiver with no Trey Wilson. They lost multiple defensive players in that game who are going to be on the injury report this week. So the problem with a team like Texas is they're well-rested, they're well-prepared, and they're grouped up and mentally ready for the run in the month of November. Steve Sarkeesian said during Monday's press conference that you remember the month of November. And their schedule is very memorable. They got games against Florida. They got games against Arkansas. They got games against Texas A&M. Those are games that are going to have serious implications on the Longhorns and where they reside in the college football playoff hunt. So you cannot have a margin for error. And let's not forget about Kentucky, who has shown you at times their ability to play up to the level of competition, including a Georgia squad at home. So there's games left that still matter to Texas. For me, what this really comes down to is, do you have enough left in the tank? And I'm not talking about when it comes to the aura and energy of the locker room. You are easily fooling yourself if you don't think that those players down in Gainesville are not waking up and playing for Billy Napier. That is the far-fetched thing. The fact that this was a 20-20 to game with five minutes left in the fourth quarter shows you that they're playing for their coach. But when you use up all of that oxygen, when you use up all that hype juice, when you use up all of those jitters and all of that anxiety-induced riddled fuel, and then you travel down to a team that has time to rest, time to group, and time to prepare you may not be able to get off the mat if you're down 21 nothing. You may have struggle moments when you're trying to find a way to capitalize on a third down conversion and you're bulldo- bulldozed back for a nine-yard loss. And again, it is the quarterback. Aiden Werner, you got to give a lot of credit to the kid. He's smart. He went to Yale. He was smart to go down to Gainesville and say, I suited up and played at an SEC program and I got a degree from the University of Florida. That's smart thinking right there. But it also is smart to realize that there is a clear separation between Graham Mertz DJ Lagway, and of course, what we now have in Aiden Warner on how to prepare for this game. The injuries are stockpiling up. What I'm going to be really interested in, especially from Texas mindset, go back and look at how Georgia played against them. They were very well prepared, and that was probably the healthiest we had seen Georgia at that time. Minus Tate Ratledge, they were at near full go. They're going to be back at full capacity. Going to get back Isaiah Bond. Going to get back Andrew Makuba. Those are two essential playmakers that came in from the transfer portal that have been detrimental to their success. This may be a blowout, but again, if there is anything that I will say, players waking up for their head coach and then embodying the underdog mentality may carry a little bit of weight, but it does start with DJ Lagway. Even at a limited capacity, having him on the field for maybe 25% of plays might be enough to get one or two big explosive touchdowns that keep this thing interesting going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, Cole, you mentioned a week to rest up and get healthy for Texas. And at this time of year, right, everybody's banged up. Everybody's nursing some injuries, what have you. But that's why it makes the bye weeks at this time of year so invaluable, right, or so so valuable for these teams. Uh, so I would expect Texas, obviously, like you mentioned, this is probably going to be the healthiest they've been in quite some time. And, Cole, it was crazy being there in person in Jacksonville, just watching. At one point, it felt like just play after play. You're like, another guy's down, another guy's yeah. down. And just it, it does seem like it's kind of – it's piling up for Florida a little bit, and certainly it culminates with DJ Lagway, um, you know, going down. You mentioned Montreal Johnson, him being out. That's allowed a guy like Jaden Ball, though, to step up in the running game. And I look at both these running games, and who's going to be able, Cole, to lean more so on the running game and get their round games going? You know, Florida at times has really struggled to stop the run this year. Uh, Texas defensively has been really good stopping it. Jaden Ball, watching him in person, that kid's a ball player. I mean, he's a stud. Nobody's doubting the young talent Florida has, but I think. Who's able, Cole, to lean on the running game more? Because, again, a few weeks ago, and it's funny enough, the last two weeks we've seen each of these two teams. I've seen them in person, Texas, Vandy, and Nashville, and then, of course, Florida, Georgia at the cocktail party. You know, Texas struggled a little bit in the running game. Quinn Ebers was really good throwing the football, especially in the first half, the last time they were out, completed 17 straight passes. But I think who's able to get the ground game going, and I think especially, Cole, from the Florida perspective, if they're not able to generate some sort of running game and you've got a limited DJ Lagway or to an Aiden Warder under center, it's going to be really tough. Again, from the Texas perspective, I think we feel pretty confident they're going to be able to throw the football. The middle of the field was open a lot against Georgia. Um, you feel like, Cole, and hey, listen, I know that Quinn Ebers loves the check down and the safe throw, and, that, and that's great. Not knocking a kid, not doing it. 
this is a good opportunity, I think, this weekend to kind of open some things up, take some of those more downfield shots. Cole, Quinn Ubers made some great throws across the middle of the field against Vanderbilt. I think you'd expect to see more of that from him in this game. I think just having Quinn to get a week off and regroup, reassess his body and not have to worry about that oblique injury is just critical. Because if you did see in that Vanderbilt game multiple throws that we envisioned back when he was at full capacity against Michigan, back when he was slicing and dicing up UTSA, back when we saw him play against Colorado State, we saw the version of Quinn that drew a lot of Heisman interest, that drew a lot of Texas is the team to beat in the SEC. But we also saw him have a couple of errors. Now, don't get me wrong. One of those interceptions, regardless if it was bad up in the air, it's an interception. But still, does he feel confident throwing on his back leg? Does he feel confident being able to extend plays outside the pocket and deliver deep shots down the field? That's why this wet rest week was critical for him. I do wonder what this run game is going to be because Florida's defense has been its backbone since that Mississippi State game. They have been able to stay in matchups because of the front seven, delivering on all cylinders. Uh, Ron Roberts and uh, Austin Armstrong have done a really good job coordinating and putting the team in certain schemes that allow them to capitalize. But Texas also has shown you that when they play against quality defenses, they can run it when they feel like it. Go back and look at that Oklahoma game in Red River. They average 5.9 yards per play. They showed you on the ground, they still have something there, whether it be with Jared Gibson, whether it be with Contravious Wisner, whether it be with Jaden Blue, they have the ability to utilize that ground game as an advantage to set up the pass. And I feel like that that's something that you want to see in this game because of the teams that have that secondary element, teams that can deliver the quality number two punch are the ones that are going to be dangerous to face off against in the college football playoff. And ones that you don't want to take on down the stretch when you can have that play action be set up with a deep shot to a Silas Bolden or an Isaiah Bond or a Matthew Golden or a Jonte Cook or a Ryan Wingo. But also trust that you have a ground game that puts you in third and manageable to then get the ball out to Gunnar Helm, to then get a swing pass out to Jaden Blue. You're going to take that 10 times out of 10. So I want to see what version we're going to get of the run game because the last two times, 3.1 yards against Vanderbilt, 1.1 yards against Georgia, they forced Quinn Ewers, who is not at 100%, to have to win through the year. And he got some passes off and he showed his arm strength, but he also had a couple of turnovers that were very costly at times that allowed Vanderbilt to go ahead and hang on a little bit too close for comfort and allowed Georgia to capitalize and walk away with the dub. The one thing I will say, Chris, is that yes, it was a pesky fight from Vanderbilt to be able to come back in their own backyard. Yet still, it never for me felt like Texas was in jeopardy of losing that game. It more so felt like a little bit out of gas, definitely want to get into that bye week without any more injuries, any more concern. Let's hit the reset, get two weeks to mentally and physically prepare ourselves for the matchup against Florida before we go on this long run throughout the month of November. That really is how I felt about this matchup two weeks ago even though you do look at the score and say, well, it was only a three-point win. Well, that three-point win honestly looks even more impressive with the way that Vanderbilt is back now ranked. And at the end of the day, that's going to carry a lot of weight for whoever plays Vanderbilt when it comes to their resume booster for the college football playoff. And I think, Cole, you made a great point, too, about I thought the bye week came at a perfect time for Texas. Absolutely. Just from, just from taking a breath of like, okay, guys. Because, I mean, you look at that point in the season, Cole, and where Texas is at right now. If you would have told anyone the way the season's gone for Texas, you lost to Georgia, it's like, okay, like you're still having a really great year. You're in a great position going into the month of November. But it definitely felt like, to your point, the bye week came at a perfect time. You take that breath. You, you get healthy. You kind of, okay, regroup, reassess. Let's recharge our batteries a little bit and go into this final month and you know set up, make the run that we know we're capable of and that we want to make. I just don't think the bye week could have come at a better time and I wonder, do we see kind of a refreshed Texas on Saturday afternoon? Like, does it does it look like we're like, man, that bye week really did help them? I think there's a good opportunity that happens. You also, Cole, made a really good point that I didn't even think about before this was, you know, that was a rivalry game last weekend. And I think for Florida, I'm not going to say there's a hangover, but it's just the emotions of that. It's so emotionally draining. You know, it wasn't a game, Cole, where, like, the game's over at halftime, you check no. out, whatever. Like, you're down to the wire in that thing, and that can really take it out of you emotionally. So is Florida able to pick themselves up off the mat, go into Austin, tough place to play? But, I mean, listen, if you were going to try to pull the upset, you, there's no time you'd rather this game be at. Get it as early as possible. Maybe you catch them napping a little bit. Although, again, Texas coming off the bye week, I think they're going to be razor sharp and focused. Um 
Can they play a clean game is, I think, the main point here. Because, again, look at what happened. They were were tied at 13. A muffed field goal attempt puts Georgia great in territory for them to be able to capitalize. And then the C.J. Allen pick allows them to get the other touchdown. That was the difference in this game. Really. I I mean, honestly, when you break that down, you make a field goal, you force Georgia to drive, and then you get that touchdown return by Jacoby Jackson, of all people, to really kind of set himself back up to get a good time run. Play a clean game of football. Catch maybe Texas slipping early. Maybe you'll be able to pull away late. And I think Cole for Texas on the other side. It's this is. I think this one's really important just in regards to. It's still the same season, but it kind of feels like to me. It's like I would be looking as like we're starting our new season this Saturday. Mm-hmm. Like this is that you know what's happened has happened. We got to the bye week, and now our next run begins because the goal obviously is to win the national championship. And Texas can absolutely still do that, in my opinion. Certainly make the SEC title, go through the playoff, and win the national title. But it starts in setting the tone here, I think, Cole, is really, really important. You know, having a big game for Quinn Ewers, establishing the run game, like you mentioned. The defense continue to be relentless because it's been so good. I just think it's really important. Like like Sark said, they remember November. Get off on the right foot in November. Close out the season strong. Building momentum. Momentum is so key in college football, as we've seen across the board. Cole, that being said, let's go ahead and dive in our predictions for this one. Let's lock it in, lock in our picks. I'll let you start. Longhorns and Gators, Saturday at DKR in Austin. Early kickoff time. Texas, a three-touchdown favorite. Who comes out on top? I want to see Quinn Ewers just have a very clean game. I want to go back to the version that was able to capitalize when they played against UTSA, the one that set the tone out in Michigan. And that starts with having a good run game. That starts with seeing a good performance from Jaden Blue, from Wisner, from Gibson. Those three making sure that they put themselves in manageable situations. I want to see the defense be able to kind of force a young quarterback into making mistakes. And regardless of who it is, if it's going to be Warner, if it's going to be uh, uh, Lagway, They're both freshmen, so they haven't played a lot of matchups, especially in an environment built just like DKR on the road. They've played at home, and don't get me wrong, when you play in the swamp, you know what that environment's like. But playing at DKR, regardless of the time, regardless of what the wafting smell of breakfast tacos versus brisket at night is like, you know that this is going to be a great game. I feel like that if you had DJ Lagway at full strength, this could at least be an interesting matchup. I feel like that having a guy, Mike Montreal Johnson, come back, he would be able to, I think, at least put the team on his back a little bit. I think if you had a Trey Wilson at full strength, along with Elijah Badger, along with Shamir DK, there'd be enough to say, well, if there are explosive plays to be had, the way that we had with Ada Mizell last week down in Jacksonville, we can at least make Texas sweat going into halftime, maybe even the end of the third quarter. But then you would see Texas pull away. I feel like that right now, people are somewhat doubting Texas. They lost to Georgia. Guys, let's just call a spade a spade. At the start of the year, if you said that Georgia beat Texas, nobody would be shot because it's Georgia. It's the standard of the SEC. It's year one, and that's the only loss they have on the schedule. Now that win against Vanderbilt looks that much more impressive because they're ranked again. What they could do to Arkansas, Kentucky, and Texas A&M down the stretch. And don't think for one second that that burnt orange Longhorn logo won't carry a lot of weight sitting at 10-2 and in the college football playoff regardless of resume. They will be in the dance, and they still have a shot away in the national title. November is the month to remember. November is the month to where you can stockpile that resume, make sure that you cross off the T's, dot the I's, and have a performance that nobody can second guess. I think it starts on Saturday. I think that you will see Florida make some plays early on. But you watch as Texas once again redefines itself as one of the premier teams in the sport. I think this is going to lean at least in favor of Florida when it comes to the points. 21's a lot. Three touchdowns is a lot. So go ahead and give me Florida to cover. Give me Texas to win 40-20 to in Austin. They get to go ahead and set the tone moving forward for the rest of the regular season. Cole, to me, this game all comes down to the health of DJ Lagway, if I'm being totally honest, not to oversimplify it, but I can see a path to maybe a fourth quarter battle if DJ Lagway is 100%. The problem is I don't think he's going to be 100%. I, I just, even if he plays, which I'm almost at the point, Cole, where, you know, not to look too far ahead from the Florida perspective, but it's like, man, if he's anything less than 100%, I don't know that you even run him out there and risk it because you've got other games down the stretch. Like, Cole, I think this game against Texas, can we just call it for what it is? I don't think this was ever looked at as one that was like, 
one of the winnable games down the stretch. You looked more at the LSU game, the Ole Miss game. I mean, certainly Florida State now, but you didn't look at Georgia, Texas as, you know, this is one we can really steal. And I don't know that you put DJ Lagway at risk. You don't throw him out there if he's 75% and risk re-injuring him. And then, all due respect to Aiden Warner, if he's your your starting quarterback in the final three games, I don't even know if you beat Florida State. I don't know if that's going too far, but we'll talk about that one in a few weeks. Either way, 100% DJ Lagway, I could see a path to a tight competitive game. But Cole, I will say this to your point. They remember November, and I think it'll be a performance to remember for Texas. I think they're going to come out of this bye week. I think that was the best thing that could have happened to them. They're going to come out of this thing sharp. They're going to come out at rested, focused, healthier than they've been in quite some time. Like you mentioned, Makuba's going to be back. Bond's going to be back. I think Quinn Ewers taking some time off for him to heal up too. And I think just kind of everybody in the organization refocusing, got to recharge your batteries a little bit. Everything's right in front of you, right? I mean, just because you lost to Georgia, it's all right in front of you. The goals are still on. The mission's still the same. But I think they all understand. I think Texas understands getting off on the right foot in November because they do remember November, and it's about building momentum right now. I don't think Florida is going to have a counterpunch. I don't think they're going to have an answer. I think you see, Cole, the Texas running game get off and running. So I think it's not all going to be on Quinn, but I do think Quinn is a big day. I think he hit some big shots over the middle. Uh, I just, again, I don't think without DJ Lagway, this team has much of a chance to hang in there. But I do agree with you. I think 21 and a half is a lot. It's a lot. That, That feels like a lot of points. So even with that, I don't think this game's ever in doubt. I think Texas handles business. I think they look sharp. But I do think Florida, to your point, covers the 21 and a half. I got Texas 34, Florida 13 in this game. So right on the number, the hook saves you if you're betting Florida plus 21 and a half. But I I think we walk away from this game really impressed with Texas, Cole. And again, I think we're leaving this game saying, man, that bye week really was beneficial for them. And for Florida, it's just as simple as, no DJ Lagway, no chance in this game. And I just don't see any path where he's going to be 100% good to go. So either way, I, I think Texas handles their business at home, starts off November on the right foot. And again, they're they're playing for a lot more. I think Florida plays hard, though, Cole. This team, they are – say whatever you want about Billy Napier. I've got my opinions. You do too, so does everybody else. But this team loves Billy. They're bought in on Billy. They play hard for Billy. And watching them in person, it's like they've got talent. There's just yeah. a couple things missing, and I think we know what those things are. For the most part, but uh, I don't think it'll. I don't think it'll much matter. I think Texas is just the better team, top to bottom. I think they show that on Saturday. Here's the beauty of it all: you're sitting at four and four. This isn't a game that you probably would have a great shot in with DJ Lagway fully healthy. You could still pull out an upset or two on the way to get to six and six, and that ultimately might be enough to save Billy Napier's job. If you don't have a 100% built ready DJ Lagway, Billy, it's okay to take this one as an L. Nobody's really going to be that shocked. Make sure that you're mentally and physically prepared with him when you face off against Ole Miss, when you face off against LSU, when you face off against Florida State, because you're not going to be able to save your job if you send him out too early and it costs you a little bit too late. So, guys, do you agree with us? Do you disagree? How do you see this thing playing out when Texas and Florida do battle Saturday in Austin? Guys, that's going to do all for us. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in again. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications. Check us out via podcast, wherever you get your podcast. You can also find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. For Cole Thompson, I'm Chris Phillips. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in, and we will catch you on the other side.